We bid you welcome. We do not ask what you believe or expect you to think a certain way, but only that you try to live a kindly, helpful life with the dignity proper to a human being. Welcome all who believe that religion is wider than any sect and deeper than any set of opinions. Welcome all who might find in our friendship strength and encouragement for daily living. Just put your paws up, cause you were born this way, baby. Yeah.
Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Happy Bye. Pride. Be safe. I am J.J. O'Brien, and the following is part of my Facebook post on National Coming Out Day in October of 2014. My coming out has been an evolutionary process, and this provides a snapshot from 2014. The title of my reading is called Coming Out Day. Today is National Coming Out Day. It is October 11, 2014. I take a stand for the truth of who I am. I come out as bisexual and transgender. I am a gender non-conforming and gender fluid person who blurs the gender boundaries. I come out proudly in both my male persona as John and in my female persona as Jennifer. Being out of the closet gives me a sense of freedom, overflowing inner joy, and self-love. Love has won over fear. The truth has set me free on this national coming out day. Please recite with me our shared affirmation of mission. This fellowship is a welcoming, diverse, and nurturing beloved community that promotes progressive religious thought and practice to create a more loving, just, and sustainable world.
There is a spark that passes between us, whether we are together in person or connected with each other virtually. This spark is meant to light our way and it brings us to this place at which we gather to be nourished and renewed by our beloved community. We call this light before us in hope that we may always remain a strong community, working together to make the world a better place. I am a transgender male. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I am a retired law enforcement officer and 9-11 first responder from New York City. Thank you. I became ill in 2012. I had already begun my physical transition from female to male, and I had to stop. In 2017, traditional and non-traditional treatments for various illnesses was not working. So I made the life-saving decision to move 2,400 miles away to Sedona, Arizona, to go on a journey of healing and well-being. Sedona is a beautiful, majestic, and sacred place I've been traveling to since 2007. Shortly after arriving, I began my mind, body, and spirit journey. In the first weeks, I realized in order to facilitate healing, I had to reconcile with myself the fact that my gender identity did not match my reflection in the mirror. I needed to create an understanding both for myself and for my community. To be honest, there really was little understanding of the transgender community, even from my lesbian, gay, and bisexual siblings. I wasn't the only transgender sibling living in this new community, but I was becoming most visible. I did not feel embraced in Sedona at first, feeling alone and being called she and ma'am on a regular basis was breaking my serenity. In some of the experience I encountered, I walked away laughing on the outside, but feeling frustrated. I thought, what was God's purpose? when she led me to live in Sedona. I began to meditate as well as pray to be guided to a solution. Part of this prayer being, if your will is for me to live, show me how to do this. One of the scriptures I read was Psalm 139. I read several versions of Psalm 139. Throughout each text, all references were individual in nature. I did not read in any version where it said, God only made cisgender heterosexuals. <laughs> so I continued to read, and this psalm guided me to my decision. Verse 13 and 15 certainly affirms who I am and confirms we all are intentionally created differently. However, it was verse 16 that clarified for me that God's purpose for each of us was not based on gender. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed, which said to me my purpose and plan was about my innermost being, my light, my heart. So my perspective and interpretation of the psalm became we are each created with life force energy, each of us being light, 
born with our own unique characteristics. And one aspect of my uniqueness is I am transgender. But I am light, you are light. We are all light, each of us with our own uniqueness, creating the tapestry of gender identity, sexual orientation, multiracial and multicultural world. So my solution became to love the body I am in while honoring the man inside. I'm happy to say I've experienced great healing. However, to be transparent, my mind wandered once again to thinking about physical transitioning. Thank goodness one of my doctors spoke up and reminded me of the risk I would be taking after all that my body has gone through. One of my friends asked me, why would you think of doing this? Is it for you? Or are you doing it to be accepted and loved by community? To, me, to be honest, it wasn't for me. So I say with deep respect in my heart for all of you, let's stop debating about gender identity. I know this is not simple, but gender identity has been taught for generations through the lens of white supremacy culture, transgender, non-binary, bi-gender, two-spirited, genderqueer or gender non-conforming and intersex individuals have always existed. We are just becoming more visible and using our voices to bring about awareness and change. Let's ask the questions about the issues that impact non-gender conforming siblings in this society. What you will learn are similarities in the struggles that all indigenous and marginalized people have in this country. This year, I participated in planning of the first transgender summit in Sedona, May 2019, for the whole state of Arizona. The committee represented various gender identities. The program was designed to educate and bring awareness to the transgender, non-gender conforming community and the communities they live in. It wasn't a surprise that racism, exclusion from health care and social services, employment discrimination, homelessness, poverty, immigration barriers, and policing and criminal justice reform were the hot topics. Does this sound familiar? It became clear to me that we as non-conforming individuals experience rejection, emotional pain, physical danger, and oppression on a daily basis because we are striving to live an authentic life. 41% of our community has attempted suicide. One of the summit planners shared their journey of what it was like to be an undocumented, non-binary, Latinx homeless sex worker. And yes, I said one of the planners because we invited everybody to the table. The only job they could get was to be a sex worker. This person consistently worried about being arrested and deported or not receiving medical treatment, not having a place to live or a hot meal, and if they would be assaulted or killed. In 2018, the American Medical Association declared transgender violent deaths an epidemic the AMA recognized that number are underreported and many victims are misgendered at the time of death. In 2018, we mourned 27 of our gender non-conforming si siblings. 25 of those siblings were transgender women of color. In 2019, all 25 violent deaths have been transgender women of color. I find this appalling, unacceptable, and heartbreaking. How about you? So what do we do? How do we become part of the change? How do we bring awareness and education to others? In the communities we live in and worship in. For me, I became a board member of Unify Sedona. Unify Sedona serves the LGBTQIA community by promoting and celebrating diversity through education and community outreach. Non-discrimination, youth and education, transgender rights, 
and health and aging are the four pillars and the foundation of our organization. And for the faith communities, they were not present at the Transgender Summit, even though they were invited. Many pe people looked for their presence and noticed their absence. I realize that opening, open and affirming in these faith communities seem hollow. They did not feel safe, embracing, and exclusive for gender non-conforming people like me. I made it a priority to start reaching out to the faith communities. After all, my roots are in this congregation, Middle Church, and I carry them with me. You folks here taught me to be bold, so I didn't give up. My bi-gender friend JJ and I preached at the Sedona Unitarian Universal Fellowship on transgender insight and education. I made announcement at another congregation about local events Unify Sedona was hosting, and I have had conversations with two other faith leaders, and here I am today with you. So I am praying, holding space, and hoping hearts and minds will change in all faith communities. Remember, the oppressors are capitalized on division amongst the oppressed. Solidarity is necessary for all of us to overcome. And I leave you with a few requests. Transgender Day of Remembrance is November 20th. I ask that you, in some way, remember our transgender siblings and their families that have lost their lives to violence. Because of who they are, light a candle, say a prayer, meditate, I ask you also to pray for me and the folks in Sedona. On November 20th this year, Unify Sedona, PFLAG, Sedona International Film Festival, has formed an alliance to show educational LGBT films at Mary Fisher Theater, and we will appreciate your prayers. Change is happening because I learned how to be bold, embracing, compassionate, loving, and I am because you are. May we continue this journey of learning and embracing each other with love. Thanks again. It's great to be home. Good morning. I'm JJ O'Brien, president of PFLAG Sedona Verde Valley. PFLAG provides support, education, and advocacy on behalf of the LGBTQ community, their parents, families, friends, and allies. I want to talk about where the LGBTQ community currently stands in its fight for complete equality in the United States. Some very important gains have been made nationally in the past five years. The biggest gain was the Supreme Court's landmark ruling in June of 2015 that made same-sex marriage legal and made marriage equality a reality. However, this ruling could be in future jeopardy as conservative and anti-LGBTQ judges have been appointed to the Supreme Court since 2017. Additionally, two Supreme Court judges made recent public comments that were anti-same-sex marriage. But for now, marriage equality is the law of the land. In June of 2020, the Supreme Court made another landmark ruling when it decided that Title VII of the Civil Rights Act bars discrimination in the workplace based on sexual orientation and gender identity. This ruling extended protections to millions of LGBTQ workers nationwide. But the fight for complete equal rights continues, and we have a long way to go to provide full national equality for the LGBTQ community. Two-thirds of LGBTQ Americans have reported experiencing discrimination in their personal lives. In 29 states, there are no explicit laws that protect people from discrimination 
on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity in employment, housing, and public accommodation. Now, the Supreme Court's June ruling dealt with employment. There are such non-discrimination laws in 21 states and the District of Columbia. Arizona is one of the states with no protections, although there are six cities in Arizona that have passed their own non-discrimination laws, Phoenix, Tucson, Tempe, Flagstaff, Sedona, and Will Winslow. For me personally, I have experienced a few instances in the Verde Valley where I have felt discrimination, but this has been minimal for myself. For the most part, from my experience, Sedona is a very supportive, accepting, and live and let live community. Earlier in 2020, Idaho's governor signed into law two anti-transgender bills, making Idaho the first among more than 40 states that have introduced such legislation this year. Due to COVID-19, however, many of these state legislative sessions were canceled until next year, Arizona being one of those states. The LGBTQ community has been under constant attack by the current United States administration since January 20th, 2017. Most of the non-discrimination protection gains the LGBTQ community made under the previous administration have been reversed in the past four years. Although there are dozens and dozens of examples, here are some highlights of what has happened. Within hours of the president swearing in on Inauguration Day in 2017, pages regarding LGBTQ rights and recognition were removed from government websites, including the White House website. The current administration proposed a new definition that would narrowly define sex as either male or female, unchangeable and, and determined by birth. According to the New York Times, the new definition would essentially eradicate federal recognition of the estimated 1.4 million transgender Americans. In addition, agency staff, including those at the CDC, have been instructed to stop using the word transgender in official reports. The current administration reversed the previous administration's interpretation of the Civil Rights Act that protects transgender workers from, from employment discrimination and ceased enforcing non-discrimination protections as well as taking a hostile stance to LGBTQ workers in court. Thankfully, the Supreme Court's recent ruling on workplace discrimination in June of this year took care of this issue. The Departments of Education and Justice have eliminated the previous administration's guidance that schools must treat transgender students consistent with their gender identity. This change encourages school officials to permit harassment of transgender students, deny access to facilities consistent with gender identity, and not use correct names and pronouns, all inflicting untold emotional harm on transgender students. The current administration banned transgender people from serving in the military against the expert advice of military leadership, medical authorities, budget analysts, 70% of Americans, and the armed forces of allied countries. The current administration has appointed anti-LGBTQ judges to appointments at every level of the judicial, judicial system. The Health and Human Services Department created an, a new office whose sole purpose would be to defend physicians and other medical professionals who decide to refuse care to LGBTQ patients, as well as proposing the removal of discrimination protections currently written in the Affordable Care Act for health care programs that cover LGBTQ people. Fortunately, this was temporarily blo blocked by a federal judge in August of this year. If the Justice Department is ultimately successful in their argument to overturn the Affordable Care Act, over 100 million people with pre-existing conditions like HIV would not be covered. 
The current administration has proposed a federal regulation that would strip away non-discrimination requirements and permit all Department of Health and Human Services grant recipients, notably adoption and foster care agencies, to discriminate against LGBTQ people. Despite the fact that LGBTQ people are significantly more likely to experience homelessness in their lives, the Department of Housing and Urban Development proposed a rule to permit emergency shelters to deny access or otherwise discriminate against homeless, transgender, and gender nonconforming people. HUD also canceled a scheduled survey on LGBTQ homelessness. The Federal Bureau of Prisons rolled back the previous administration's policy that housed transgender prisoners consistent with their gender identity. With transgender people experiencing sexual assault at higher rates than average, this decision only puts them at further risk of assault. And as our country has become more divided and polarized, the level of hate crimes against LGBTQ people has increased. This is especially true for the transgender community. And as of October 18th, there have been 33 transgender people who have been murdered in the United States, which is the highest number since this type of data began being collected in 2013. And we still have two months to go in 2020. The vast majority of the, those murdered are African-American transgender women with Hispanic Latina transgender women reaching high levels as well. It is the intersectionality of transphobia, racism, and misogyny that is the root cause of this violence against transgender women of color. PFLAG Sedona Verde Valley and Unify Sedona are partnering again this year as we did last year and will be holding an event on Transgender Day of Remembrance at Mary Fisher Theater in, in Sedona on Friday, November 20th at 4 p.m. We will first show a transgender-related documentary and will then hold a candlelight vigil to honor and remember those transgender people who have been murdered in 2020. So, where do we go from here in the fight for LGBTQ equality? The Equality Act is where we go from here. A national non-discrimination law is necessary to protect all LGBTQ people in the United States. Passage of the Equality Act into law is PFLAG's top priority. The House of Representatives passed the Equality Act in May of 2019. If approved by the Senate and signed by the President, the Equality Act would amend Title VII of the Civil Rights Act to prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity in the areas of employment, housing, public accommodation, public education, federal funding, credit, and the jury system. Unfortunately, despite support from almost every segment of the U.S. population, including a majority of Democrats and Republicans, the current administration is opposed to the Equality Act. There has been no movement with the Equality Act since it was approved and passed by the House of Representatives 18 months ago. The bill is currently stalled in the Senate. So as you can see, there's been a lot of progress made in the past several years for complete LGBTQ equality. But unfortunately, there's also been some major setbacks and stumbling blocks placed in our way. We still have a very long way to go as a country and the fight for complete equality continues.
those of us who journey back beyond primeval roots, those of us who seek a dream which some won't comprehend, those of us who travel far within the spirit's flow know there is always more. Take the beauty of the desert with its glow of sunset gold. Take the highest peak and river's rumbling depth. Take the freshness of the earth and the restless heart of woman and of man. Then spill an ocean over them until all are lost in a wondrous sea of love. Bless the ancient mother of this crystal planet home. Bless the light which calls within our spirit and our soul. Bless the thirst in each of us to truly find our way and be blessed within the oneness of divinity. Be the center of the journey. Be the soul of music's sound. Be the tide in perfect balance and the secret in the mist. Be the word which has no speaking in the poetry of life. Be the gift which makes your living such a total act of love. Be bless, be centered, be love, and be peaceful in the flow. Now is the time for silent meditation. We have been warmed by fires we did not build. We have drunk at wells we did not dig. In gratitude of our many blessings and many needs, this morning's offering for this community will now be received.
Extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. <laughs>